There's something about breakfast that makes me super happy. I never skip it. Normally, it's a healthy breakfast. I usually, you know, most work days it's healthy. But one day a week when I just decide I'm gonna do something different, I just like to take little regular things like French toast or pancakes and switch them up a bit. And usually it has to do with what I have in the house, which is the case today. Because I always have a big fruit bowl on top of the stove that's filled with fruit and always apples in there. Doesn't matter what's going on, there's apples. So that's how this came about. Get my pan hot. Okay, two tablespoons of butter go into here. We don't want it too, too hot so it burns, but we want to definitely make sure that that butter's gonna get melted and get the apples right into the pan. And we basically, at this point, we want the butter and the sugars to mix together so we get some color on there. So, mm. so this is cooking away, and that's part one of one of my most favorite French toast variations. I start with a pretty basic French toast recipe. I take six eggs, and I uh, laugh to myself now whenever I make French toast because I was teaching my youngest son to make French toast, and he said, is that all it is, is eggs and milk? And now it's actually one of the things he can make. But I always take this basic combo here of six eggs and one cup of milk, and then I riff. It depends on what I'm in the mood for, but this is the basic, combination of liquid to egg to give that nice mixture that you know permeates the bread and when it's cooked has a nice golden outside to it. One cup of milk. I can smell the apples and they're smelling amazing. And then to this, a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla and French toast is great, but here's where you could start to riff, whatever flavor you like. If you wanted to put cinnamon in here, you could put cinnamon in here. Sometimes I mash up a banana in my French toast. Now that this over here is getting caramelized, I'm gonna just stop for one sec and get a little bit of water in there. Just a couple tablespoons of water. And all this is gonna do is allow it to soften and just get this mixed up here. You really want to make sure with this that you get those yolks incorporated. Because I'm making an apple sauced French toast, I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon in there. And in this case, I don't want the cinnamon to hide. I want that cinnamon flavor to really come out and support that apple flavor. So that's beautiful. Now just I'm going to get this aside and get to my bread. I love a Pullman loaf of bread. Now it's interesting that French toast Actually, in French, it's called pain perdu, which means lost bread. And the idea for French toast originally was if you had bread that was dried out, this would be the thing to make. Because something that is porous and dry sucks up that egg, and that is exactly what you want when you're making a French toast. So this whole loaf is going to be perfect in here, but I'm just going to get a couple of these started because it is my day for breakfast and I am overly excited. I should say it's my day for the kind of breakfast where I get to have something sweet and that's what this is doing. Now you wanna make sure that you let that soak enough to soak in the custard so that when it's cooked through, there's custard all the way through the bread. Now my apples have been simmering away here and it's ready for the maple syrup, about a half a cup of maple syrup. I'm sort of mixing the fruit topping with the maple syrup that I would ultimately put on plain French toast anyway. And just get this in here. I just like it to simmer away a little bit on the stove top. So just give that a second. It's on a very low heat. All right, now we might be ready to go here. So I'm gonna put the butter in. Make sure it's not too hot. I think it's actually perfect. I'm using a nonstick skillet here. You can also use a big cast iron if you have one. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. All right, I'm gonna give that just one second to heat up, and I'm putting a little bit of pinch of cinnamon in my apples. I told you that I wanna have a definite cinnamon flavor. Oh, this, this just smells like coziness, like anything that would make you feel comfortable and at ease. There's something about cinnamon and apples cooking together that does that for you. All right, so I'm gonna put this right into the pan. Normally I'm in a production line making French toast as fast as I can. It's my day for indulging myself with breakfast. So I'm gonna take a look at this. I think I can turn this. I have a feeling it's gonna be perfect. Oh yeah, that's what you want. Doesn't that look familiar like the most beautiful French toast in the world? 
let's let that cook for just a little while. So I serve this one sort of offset from the other, and yes, a little more butter. Why not? Not too much, just a tiny bit. And then we've got our beautiful apple maple mixture here. I sort of kid myself into thinking, or maybe it's not kidding, that I've got, you know, fresh fruit here that I started with. So there's a spectacular breakfast. Would it be a happier plate if it had salty bacon next to it? Don't think I could argue with that. But I really don't think you're missing anything here by not having bacon. Let's see, mm, here's what I want. I want a little crisp on the outside, a little soft in the middle, a little caramelization from those apples. Mm. 